This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. Hey, Carm here in Season's Greetings and Happy Holidays. I hope you continue to be safe and well during the holiday. Hey, thanks for your continued support. Hey, my guest today is Dominic Robel and Bob Hype, both from Mobile Auto Solutions in Chicago. Now, they're commonly referred to as MAS. Now, this interview is about Dominic, a 23-year-old straight out of college, working with 25 other mobile diagnostic technicians and learning the trade. He is Bob Hype's mentee, and you know Bob as a member of the Threesome Technician Talk Group, where we've done nine really intense and off-the-wall episodes. They're really great. Now, if you're new to the podcast, go to the collections page on the website to find all the Technician Talk episodes. Dominic and Bob talk with us about the transitions and challenges of adapting to work without any prior experience. It's very much like what an automotive grad would go through. Now, Dom is in the startup with Mass. Dominic will also share light on his mentorship, new technologies, and how much he likes 8S calibrations. His goal is to have his own Mass mobile truck and get out on the road himself. Dom is learning from all 25 team members by using Slack to get the information and wisdom that he seeks. Use this episode to motivate you to hire a recent grad or start your own apprentice program. Carm Capriato, the Aftermarket Podcast Guy, and thanks for always tuning in and listening to the Aftermarket's original and premier podcast. I, I want to thank Napa Tracks for sponsoring today's episode. Now, due to the current restrictions in place in Las Vegas, international and domestic travel constraints, along with the rising cases of COVID-19, Napa has made the proactive decision to reschedule the Napa Expo. We remain committed to our attendees and exhibitors to provide a valuable and productive in-person experience at the proper time. For now, Napa believes that this is the right move for all involved, and they'll use this time to make new plans to bring you helpful and powerful content. We look forward to hosting you when we can do so safely. Our fun-paced show, Aftermarket Weekly, is where we feature the wisdom from a guest host and the industry's first weekly virtual shop tour. Hey, it's now a podcast. Find it on your favorite podcast listening app. The talking points and a link to my guest's previous episodes can be found at RemarkableResults.biz slash E599. Hey, a warm welcome to Dom Robel from MAS. That's the Mobile Auto Solutions Group up there in Chicagoland. Hello, Dominic. How's it going, Carm? We have a friend of the show. God, I don't know how many episodes we've done together, but Bob Hype is here, the technician manager, also from Mobile Auto Solutions. Hello, Robert. Hey, Carm. How are you? Good to have you here, my friend. Um, I think you probably hired Dom, right? Yeah, Kevin and I hired Dom. He came as a, uh, a reference from uh, basically one of our guys that does kind of a uh, high school board for guidance of the automotive. Uh, so the high school instructor reached out to this, one of the guys and that is on this board and says, Hey, I don't know if you're looking for a guy, but uh, I've got a guy graduating from Southern Illinois university with a uh, four year automotive technology degree. And uh, I think you guys should talk to him. That's the story, Bob. Thank you for setting it up. Uh, a, a few weeks back, I did an, an interview with a technician who came from the dealerships and into an independent. We've recently done a bunch of shows on apprentices, and there's going to be even more. So what I was excited about this, Dom, was that you're a very young person just out of school with an automotive degree. You are, you can't be any greener to go to work in an automotive company, and especially one like mass. I mean, they're a mobile group. I mean, Bob knew that he just couldn't put you in a truck with a million dollars worth of equipment and send you down the road. It would not have been fun. So you're staying, if you will, close to home. And if you will, I don't know if it's the warehouse, if it's the shop, if it's the work center, calibration center, the calibration center. Okay. The standalone calibration center. And you are earning you are earning a wing probably every week. You're you're getting better and smarter. And, of course, you couldn't have a better mentor inside the building than, Bob, that's where you hang, right? I am, unfortunately for him, his mentor. <laughs> you are his mentor, good or bad. It's Bob. <laughs> no, it's Some Bob. days he probably wishes I wasn't there. And there's <laughs> other days I think he's happy up there. 
you know, I was thinking, well, what, what can we title this this show? And and, and off the, just way off the top of my head, I come from right from college to eight ass calibrations. I mean, okay, right? Am I right? Yeah, you oh, are. Yeah. I think I had a month off between. So little OJT here, heavy, heavy OJT. And Bob, it actually kind of, I get a reminder or a feel that this is like an apprentice program, even though it's not a formal one. Yeah, I would say that it's an apprentice program, not formal what you would think that a dealership or maybe a standard uh, brick and mortar type facility would use. Obviously, our business model, we're not a um, ordinary kind of business that uh, does all of the normal things thought of in the automotive business for a shop to do. So, Dom, are you having any fun? I'm having a lot of fun learning every day. I got a group of a bunch of guys that I can pick their brains in any time I need to. Any questions I have, they're ready to answer for me. You know, that's one of the things I love about what's going on with MAS, uh, Mobile Auto Solutions, is they use Slack. I mean, I use Slack in my business and I communicate with a lot of people, but Slack is, if you will, your your internal wiki. It's it's a way that you guys all stay in touch with each other. Bob, how many guys you got out there? 20, 25 now? I think it's 26 or 27 with the office staff. Uh, I want to say 28. So there's there's a lot of moving parts going on. I imagine great, great business and, and some really great technicians. I, the thing I love about Dom, and I think people would be so jealous, is that you could just go to Slack and type in a an issue that you're having. And uh, how many answers do you get back? Everyone's always ready to help. I mean, if one guy can help out, another guy can. We have 30 people, and I definitely haven't met at least 10 of them. Hey, look, at so when you get into work each day, you're driving in and you say, God, I wonder what kind of neat new challenge that I'm going to get today. And I want to learn about blank. I just want to honestly just pull my weight every day. That's what I'm here to do. I started in uh, college. That really kind of built the basics of just uh, making sure you have your repair manuals set before you touch anything, know what you're working on before you ever get into it. And then once I got into mass, just the technology, I got hit like a wrecking ball with technology. Ah, I love that word. Let, let's let's uh, stop for a moment and ponder wrecking ball. <laughs> <laughs> Are you dealing with it? I got it. <laughs> the way I saw Bob looking at me when I came in, he thought I was going to be ready on the computer, knowing all the different technologies to go to and whatnot, all the different applications and softwares we have. But uh, I really wasn't ready for that. That, and I'm still trying to learn all that. Um, even as simple as like printing a PDF. Today, I decided I was going to set up my printer on my van, and I completely deleted all my printers, so I couldn't print on a PDF of anything, any screenshots of any car I was working on, things like that. Just I'm I'm a newbie to this. So, Robert, let me ask you this question. You're having a chance to assess his education and, you know, and what he came out with and what he's bringing to the business. Learning curve is maybe a little steeper than you expected. I can't speak for Kevin, but I think for myself, my assumption, and it didn't come up in interview type thing, was, I mean, he's 22 years old. These kids live on computers. They're born typing on them. Um, so I always just kind of assumed that he would know that kind of stuff. And after he came on board, um, he interviewed with us. And I think the same day or the next day, he had an interview with, was it a? His fork? Crown Forklifts, yeah. Crown Forklifts. Just as a mobile tech there. Dom said one of the things that made him choose us, I don't know what the money differences or anything like that were, but he liked the the whole technology edge uh, that we were and that he didn't ha- feel that he had that strong enough uh, technology background and that he wanted to learn more. I mean, as the days have gone by and weeks have gone by, I mean, we learn a little bit more about each other and where our weaknesses are. And like he was talking about the computer skills, as far as some of the just basic computer stuff that you, I assumed that he would know, uh, no big deal. We can overcome that kind of a the ATIS calibrations, 
being able to look at SI. Uh, obviously, the calibration center is bringing in, I mean, Toyotas, Hondas. We do a whole ton of Volkswagen, Audi. Dom, how, how is working on Volkswagen, Audi? I like it. Bob would rather never see one. It's good. I mean, there's a strength that you're bringing to the company that you're enjoying doing those. Hey, Carm here. And coming up, Dominic shares how his team bugged the cars so he could find the problems. Hey, it's Carm here to tell you about the best shop management solution for your auto care center, Trax Enterprise. Now, since Napa introduced Trax in 1989, it's been the industry's leading shop management system out there. Today, Trax Enterprise offers even more of the features auto care center owners want. Things like a powerful interactive scheduling calendar, faster and streamlined workflow, multi-shop capabilities, easy pay consumer financing integration, and more. That means you can count on Trax Enterprise to help drive your success today and well into the future. The tabbed interface lets you open and view multiple estimates, ROs, invoices, and purchase orders all at the same time. You can even place windows side by side, over or under, or drag a tab from another application outside tracks to open another window. One auto care center owner said he loves being able to have 10 to 12 work orders open at once. Enterprise also offers a Microsoft Outlook type calendar so you can view daily, weekly, and monthly schedules, drag and drop appointments between days and times, and block time to indicate length of work. Punch out to Mitchell Pro Demand is another huge benefit. It provides embedded labor, part, maintenance, and fluid capacities that can be transferred to estimates and repair orders within Trax. Trax Enterprise also streamlines parts ordering. Just one click and it's done. The mobile capture app sold another auto care owner on Trax Enterprise. He said there's no reason to write VINs by hand anymore. You can decode the VIN from a mobile device and send all the information directly to Trax. There are reporting features too. For example, with just a couple of clicks, you can find out how many repair orders you've written in a month. Talk to your Napa Auto Parts store and find out more about what Trax Enterprise can do for you, plus the hundreds of other great things the Auto Care program has to offer. Let me remind the listener why we're doing this show. It's fascinating to get such a green, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but, you know, lean, green, mean, you know, I, I want to work, I want to learn person in the business. And we're all saying there's a technician shortage. Where are we going to find, you know, the young people that, that are going to seed our industry? So that's one of the things. Listen to what um, Dom is saying. And of course, as Bob is his mentor, I mean, I think that's important as this interview continues to go. And Okay, so you deleted a printer. What's the big deal? No one died. Nobody got hurt. You learned from it. And was Bob surprised? Yeah, maybe he was. But if you love to do calibrations on Audi and Volkswagens, then man, your stock in the company went way up, right? We can figure out the printer problem, which is interesting because I do stupid things like that too. And I think I know. And I go through those whole things as well as with, I mean, how do I find this? How do I make this? I mean, with Windows 7, I'm okay. Now I'm moving to Windows 10. And Jiminy Cricket, you guys are making my life hard. Dom, I mean, he struggles with some of this stuff. But honestly, Kevin and I are just flabbergasted as to how well he picks up on the automotive end with finding SI, with researching stuff, with doing the calibrations and i mean honestly the two of us are just like can you believe how well he's doing i love that fact that you're adapting dom to this computer on wheels this unbelievable intelligent machine that needs to be coddled and nurtured and plugged in and and scoped and I think I just described uh, something that my doctor recently did. (laughs) Okay, I'm back. Take us over the last four to five months that you've been with Mass, if you will, steep learning curve. And I asked you earlier, what are you loving to do most of? And is it calibrations? Oh, yeah. When I showed up, they really didn't know where to start with me. So they kind of just started bugging a van we had around the shop, taking ignition coils out and whatnot and making me... Going back to like the things I did back in college in a way. After that, they started just hounding on SI with me, making sure I, I get to know how the sites work, 
making sure I know what to even look for. Next step was comprehending everything uh, and putting it on the floor and starting to actually calibrate things. So you can navigate through SI like no tomorrow, right? Most of them, yeah. We have all um, OESI, so everything's new. Every every single manufacturer is completely different, even though it's the same thing at the end of the day. We have guys that are in the field for 20, 30 years asking for help on SI on a regular basis, though, too. So, I mean, it's just we there's so much information. No one person can be an expert at all of it, so... He's doing a great job. Have you gone to any special training yet? Are you taking any classes online, leader-led, anything? Or you just, it's all internal. Whatever shows up, I take it on, and and I got Bob right by me whenever I need him. I, I totally love it. Throw, throw him in the deep end of the pool, right, Bob? <laughs> Some of it. I mean, like he was saying in the beginning, of his, I mean, his first weeks, uh, it was, let's see where he's at. Let's try to evaluate what he knows. We've got a uh, hybrid escape that uh, any new hire that we have um, has to diagnose this car, and we gave that to him. And so now, I mean, he's coming out of college. He's never worked on uh, SI as far as OE. He's never used, for the most part, OE scan tools. He's in the deep end trying to figure this stuff out. And we tell everybody, I mean, you can ask questions. We're we're not going to fix the car for you or whatnot but we're not here to make this your worst like nightmare type of thing because if you don't know si or something like that why would we punish you like that it's a it's an evaluation of how you overcome these things that you've never done how do you think how do you evolve dom's got a great personality that in some ways i'm very envious of that he doesn't seem really to get rattled if he does He's hiding it really, really well. <laughs> Bob pick it out, right? Is that true? Oh, yeah. I try to hide my emotions as much as possible, <laughs> especially in the shop. All right. So so you are getting rattled, but you're controlling it? Yeah. I guess that's just the kind of person I am. Just take it one step at a time. That's all you can really do with, especially this field, because everything's new. Every year, there's something new. Every year, every car, there's something new. Even like night vision on a Volkswagen Audi, stuff like that, where, you know, most people in our company don't even get to touch that. I mean, out of the 26 or whatever guys that we have in the company, there's probably only three people that have worked on a uh, Audi night vision system, and Dom's one of them. At 23 years old, am I right, 23? Yep, just turned last month. You're a problem solver, right, Dom? Th- that's really what I've always wanted to do. Through college, I kind of, Felt like I wanted to take on a mobile job. There were opportunities in Cummins and whatnot to be a mobile tech for them, but that never went through. But I, I always liked the mobile aspect. I like kind of working by myself and figuring it out and then having the support when I need it. Because if you know, someone's just showing me everything, how it's done, then I don't really comprehend that way. I got to kind of do it myself. You got to work with your hands. Basically, right now, he he, uh, talked about his van and getting his printer for his van. Right now, we're working on getting him set up so that he can go out on his own close to the calibration center to help out with calibrations and uh, wiring and different things we do in the company so that it can help alleviate some of the uh, when we're busy. And we took him out on uh, Friday. I, I call it, Dom, we're going on a field trip. (laughs) <laughs> we went out on Friday and we went out on yesterday, two different shops to do a couple of cars. It's one thing to work at the calibration center. Everything you know or stuff is that. I mean, it's just a, you get a comfort zone like working in a shop. Oh, yeah. When you're out in the field, it's different. And at the end of uh, Friday, he, uh, Dom's words were, geez, this stuff in the field is stressful. It's like way more stressful. A lot more people to communicate with. You're in the face of the customer now. There's a learning curve, huh? So do you have the makeup to be able to uh, you know, know that that person's paying your salary? I do now. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer, by the way. 
Bob, I'm so surprised. 23 years old, been with the company four or five months. You're almost setting up an incredible vision or a career path for Dom. I understand why you hired him, Bob. He just said a few minutes ago, he said, I like to be on my own. I always want to do something mobile. When we hired him, the ultimate goal was he would be one of the guys in the field full time at one point. And then hopefully we would be able to find another guy um, coming out of school that uh, could take the, his role on that he's doing right now. And that we could start grooming some of these guys because honestly, to find uh, guys is getting harder and harder. Um, we've been extremely successful in the past. I, I can't get people to answer ads. When I get them to answer ads, they uh, don't answer the second call. It's mind boggling how anybody can go and apply for a job, send their resume in, and then when you reach out to them, not answer back. Dom, when you and I talked, did you tell me that you were doing alignments? Yes, most of the uh, Hondas, Volkswagen, Audis, um, all those sensors are um, calibrated to the thrust angle of the rear wheels. So if toes off, then uh, the sensors aren't going to be doing their proper job. So before we can calibrate anything, we need to throw it on the alignment rack and then make sure the alignments are right. And then like a Volkswagen Audi, our alignment rack switches into a calibration center. And we just wheel away the uh, the aligner and wheel in the calibration boards. This is a Hunter then, right? Yes. It's uh, a Hunter alignment machine, but it is uh, badged with a VAS number. So it is the same equipment that you would find in a Volkswagen Audi dealer. Uh, it's not a red machine. It is a gray machine. It's not what you're going to find in most shops. Because it's got all the information in it for Hunter, as well as a software download for Volkswagen Audi. Bob, just a quick side note here. With all the extra work that goes and even to be paid for calibration, are the insurance companies, you know, these, these jobs must be coming in from what? Dealerships and local collision shops? Most of ours are from collision shops. Collision shops. Are, are they getting enough money from the insurance company to do this all of this work? Yeah. I mean, it's a situation that the insurance companies are starting to push back somewhat because they, I don't think, had any vision of what this stuff was going to end up costing them. They're trying to control it a bit. Oh, yeah. There's a ton of money that goes into getting stuff tooling-wise, and there's a ton of liability that goes into owning these repairs. They can be pricey. To perform like the first time I ever heard of a Volkswagen Audi ACC uh, for a cruise control calibration a shop. We didn't have the machinery at the time. The shop told me they had to hunt around to find a dealer that could do it. And it ended up costing them $1,500. This is an interesting question. Are you getting your money's worth out of Dom knowing that in many cases he's on an OJT? He's, you know... He's done one job and he takes on another one and it's a brand new, it's it's not the same. I mean, you take a seasoned person who has been doing diagnostic for years and how they can, you usually have, they've been there and done that in certain situations and they can, you know, do own some personal discovery is part of, and, and I'm trying to help the audience understand to take on a young individual and work with them, even if it's not an official apprentice program, which we've talked about on our shows in the past. You're getting your money's worth because you're funneling it into training, if you will. Yeah, I think you have to look at it as uh, ROI. I think if we do our job correctly, give Dom the tools or maybe Dom's replacement down the road when he gets on the road and is full-time in the field, uh, if, we, we're, if we're doing our job correctly and finding the right people and giving them the resources, the training, the development – um, then these people are going to stay with the company for a long time. And the ROI is going to be um, a no-brainer. Dom, I want you to reach out to the industry, uh, the, the people that are going to listen to this show, and maybe just talk to the, to the young students that are in college or the, that are coming out. 
and uh, you know and then tell them about the opportunity that you took on and like you did say you're having some fun your learning curve is immense what's the message to the industry i mean coming out of high school i guess my senior year i wasn't really planning on anything really just my teacher kind of saw something in me and he wanted to push me forward but but wait a minute don't, don't sell yourself short there you told me he said you had one hell of a work ethic. That's, I guess, what he saw in me. And he kind of just guided me on his path because he went to Southern Illinois as well. But from there, I guess I'm just trying to prove people right in a way. To the young people out there, I guess all you could do is want to work. I've always wanted to work. I'm not really big into school. Just got to get through it. And then you might be able to get to where you want to. I love the fact that you have just so well adapted to the environment at Mass, and you're tolerating Mr. Hype. <laughs> Many people are amazed by that. But Bob's a good guy. Well, I'm sure Bob is doing everything that he can to help steer you down the right path. And You know, I call that sometimes tough love, right, Bob? Yeah, definitely. One of those things that... Uh like I was saying earlier, there's things about Dom's personality that I'm envious of and some of that kind of stuff. I try to put myself in check sometimes and say, Hey, try to try to emulate that a little bit more than, uh, being a more high strung. One of the other things about Dom is, uh, and correct me, Dom, first generation American, right? Yes. Both. Yeah. My parents came over from Poland, uh, and I was born. I think pretty much a year after they came. So yeah, English is my second language. Just you wouldn't to... know it. <laughs> no, not at all. No, absolutely not. I would have. I would have never guessed. Great lessons here to learn from the industry. I think. Uh, uh, I, I think there's a lot of great takeaways from here. And uh, boy, um, Dom, I just wish you all kinds of success. And uh, Bobby seems like he's a sponge. Yeah, he really is. He's been a sponge the whole time. I, I know there's things that uh, uh, throughout the day that sometimes he doesn't like to do, but you know that's life with all of us, right? For the most part, I mean, those are the things that aren't car related. For the most part, directly car related. And when it comes to working on a car, I mean, he is all in. Throw it at me, give it to me, whatever. Tries to figure it out first, and then. Uh, when he comes to a stopping point, he's like, okay, um, uh, I, I need some help. What more can you ask for? It's been a pleasure having him on board. And the fact that uh, he chose this path versus working on forklifts <laughs> was uh, a big deal. I mean, we had, a, we had somebody that left the automotive industry and went to forklifts. Do you remember that? I do. Absolutely. I, inter I interviewed him. And that, I think, was interesting by the way because so many young people are not necessarily coming in the automotive and when they do and a lot of them go to the dealership 40 50 percent of them they they leave and they go to work for other industries and we are not picking them up bob they're they're just they're headed somewhere else we have no idea they're they're on the market and, and they go to HVAC, they go to Department of Transportation, they go to forklift, they go to diesel, they, they, they go to fleets everywhere, and we don't have a chance to pick them up. So I'm glad you yinged and you didn't yang. It's a hell of a base case, Bob, to, to find an individual. In fact, you need to be recruiting at Southern uh, Illinois, right? And there's probably others as well. You know? Oh, there, We have a ton of companies come through with uh, seminars and whatnot that we got to sit through all the time. I mean, right now we're not in a hiring stage because uh, the whole COVID thing has uh, everybody in flux. Luckily, I mean, business has been good for us, but uh, there's definitely uh, room for us to be busier um, in order to hire more people. But ultimately, I'd, I'd like to get Dom to the point where uh, we can get him in the field full time. And hopefully when we get in, when we're closer to that point, yeah start finding uh, somebody at a college or maybe apprentice at some other dealer or whatever, I don't know, to come in and take that spot.
Hey, this was great. Dom Robel from uh, MAS, also Bob Hype Technician Manager. Guys, uh, thanks so much for this, and thanks for opening our eyes to uh, uh, the great opportunity that you have right out of school. Bob, keep me informed as to how he's doing and what your career looks like. Maybe you know we'll have you back in a few years now that you got your own thing and you're you're smart and oh by the way there was one thing you say there's things you don't want to do we'll say your goal is to get bob's job you see (laughs) and when you get bob's job then you can delegate a lot of that stuff that's the next step i guess hey guys thanks for being here thanks carm thank you carm thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast until next time 